Hi, dyslexic genius here, Brett Hurt. I'm going to rebuild an O reproducer for an Edison for vertical carriage, and I'm going to show you what it takes, the chemicals and everything to rebuild one of these, because these are way different than any other Edison cylinder player reproducer. First, I'm going to start off with the body of this one. This one is an original steel, so if I take my magnetic little wand, I can pick it up like this. But usually you find the brass ones, I mean the pop metal ones. This is a pop metal one and this is a steel one. The steel ones are superior over the pop metal. Are the pop metal Pop metal ones are original. And the other one? The, the other one is, this steel is original also. But they made these for, for a little bit of time. And what's nice is everything's nickeled all the way into the inside. So I could micro polish this out. And you see the reflection in my hand. And this is like really going to give you sound. You know, it's not like this rough. You want this very smooth for the sound waves to travel. You don't want the sound waves hitting little mountains or boogers on the inside here. That's why I polish these out on phonographs. The other nice thing about this is these rust, and there was a little bit of rusting in here, but then you can clean the threads out on these if you take a worn out wire, brass wire brush, and if you have a lot of crud in these things, and they collect a lot of crud, you can gently just come in here like this and clean everything out. It won't hurt anything on these steel ones. So let's go forward with this. To clean the diaphragm, I use sudsy pneumonia. Straight? S straight. And we have this little hinge piece right here that attaches to the stylus bar. So you have to be careful. And on these, on most Edisons, this is the inside part of the diaphragm. And this is the outside, so all the dirt and junk hit this. So what I do is I soak this overnight and because we have the wire piece hanging down I use a, pe a block with a hole in it and I drop that in there like that. And then I take an old toothbrush and I gently scrub all the cr crud off this thing and then I come around and I clean this side and then do you scrub it with using sudsy pneumonia? I, I use it with sudsy pneumonia. And you can dip your, a used toothbrush. Don't throw your old toothbrushes away because you're going to need them working on phonographs. And you dunk it, and I cleaned it. I, I scrubbed it once, and it got really good, and then I left it overnight again. And soaking. Soaking, and then I cleaned everything up. Well, you remember I have, on other videos, I have talked about testing it. And this sounds excellent. Also, you want to use a flashlight to come underneath like this and look to see if you have any pinholes because these are very thin. These are thinner than a C or an H and we, everything came out perfectly. Now to the weight of the reproducer. This is the weight to an O and they're very heavy. And this is the two four minute change system. And you can see we have a four here and a two here. And this pivots like this underneath. So you can go right now we're at four and now we're at two. So how do I clean this? I clean this with lacquer thinner and a Q-tip so I can get all the junk in here. This reproducer is almost black from dirt. Clean all this out. Everything's cleaned out. And you want to clean out the spring because the spring goes in here like this. Then the stylus bar holder comes in here and fits in here. And then there's a pivot here and there's a pivot here. This screw with the nut and the point fit in here and the point 
fits in here. Now, what do you want to do on a rebuild? You want to oil this like a clock. So I take Lucas Gun Oil and I fill a little bit up into my little brass piece. You can use anything you want. And then I take... To hold the oil? To hold the oil. And then I take my machinist scribe like this with a small point. You can use a pin, like a sewing needle, to do this at home. And I take one little dab right there so that this screw will ride in here like this. Then, because when you take them apart, this bracket right here fits here. And every time I've taken one of these apart, I've had burrs in here. You can feel it touch because this pivots like this all the time. And then I take my scribe that I dropped. Oops. And we take a minute drop. And you can see I barely put a bit of oil on there. And now I have oil on both ends. And this, I do this because you're going to constantly go click to four, click to two, click to four, click to two. And then you, after you've done this, you want to make sure that the stylus holder and the rod are straight. They're not bent. This, us, this bar usually gets a little bent. Now it comes to the stylus bar. On the stylus bar on this side, we have a two minute. And on the back side is a four minute. So we have two here, four here, and it flips back and forth like this. How do you know which is which? The two minute has the bigger sapphire right here. See where the end of my finger is? There's a little sapphire right there. And then there's a little sapphire on this one that you can barely see. But if you hold it up, you can see the little knob sticking up. Now what we're going to do is because this pivots, this little piece right here, that end piece right there connects in the U here. So it's this is your linkage hookup, but this pivots. So now what you want to do is you want to take a little of the Lucas gun oil and you want to put a little oil right there. Just very, very minute. And then you can pivot this a little. And that helps everything pivot because I get customers' machines in and friends' machines in. And they go, they go to play with their O reproducer, and they go, oh, man, this, oh, oh. they're binding up. This should be very smooth when you turn it over and over. Because if it's not smooth, you have a tendency to bend the rod, this rod here. Now, on assembly, we have the spring, and we have that hole. And the stylus bar, this piece right here, that we just oiled, that piece, has a little nut on the end of it. And that little nut is right there. And now you will bolt it together on this side. This nut is a 5 32nd inch wrench. Well, years ago when you had ignitions and stuff, this is an ignition wrench and you can find these probably on Amazon but you need to have this to take it apart you don't want to put pliers on it I have another one I found it at a swap meet this one's really cool this is the one I used now comes how do I get my stylus bar from out here well, there's a little pin. This pin fits through here and fits through the hole of the stylus bar. So what I do is I take my punch block, or 
or you can like this. And I take a very small tapered brass pin and I ruin one every time I take one apart. I have a little box of these very small tapered brass pins. Or you can get a piece of brass that'll fit through this hole right here, that little hole. Because this will fit in there like that. And then you just take the little tappy hammer and you'll just go tap, 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 tap. And that'll start to push out the pin and then you can grab it with a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers and it'll just slide out because it gets dirty in here. Everything gets dirty and gets crudded and things won't move back and forth. This has to go in and then it taps closed. I'll show you on assembly. This gets very complicated on these. These are probably the hardest Edison uh, cylinder player reproducer to rebuild and they take a long time to do properly. And I like showing you this and that's my tip for the day.